Hey, Mike with Rogue Pest Control here. In today's video, we're going to talk all about the praying mantis. You know, what do they eat? Can they be used as pest control? And more, so stay tuned. So a lot of people don't necessarily think about the praying mantis and see it as a form of pest control, right? So again, there's all kinds of ways to do natural pest control. They have their advantages, they have their disadvantages, right? And so some people use praying mantis as a form of pest control, right? So basically, what do they eat, right? So praying mantis, they kind of eat almost anything in sight, right? So they start out very small, so they're going to feed on tiny insects like worms, fruit flies, uh, larvae, different things like that. So if they're in your garden, you know, they could be attacking different little tiny worms and aphids, things that are feeding off, you know, the plants that you want to keep around. So that can be great in that sense, um, but they're not perfect, right? They can be taken out by larger insects. Other prey can take them out. So again, you kind of have to be careful and watch over them, make sure that they're not um, landing on the ground because ants can you know, take them out, different things like that. But it's crazy as they grow, their prey tends to grow as well, right? So adult praying mantis, they can take you know, the typical pests that you might think of that could be around your garden, but they've been known to eat things like amphibians, lizards, uh, small mammals, and even birds. So it's pretty crazy how big their food sources can get. Um, so watch out on that end of things. But they can be uh, a helpful insect around your garden, uh, like I said, to kind of thin out and take care of some of those um, pests that are around your garden. The only downside really is that they don't discriminate, right? They basically eat everything. So a lot of times they could be eating other, you know, insects like um, some lady beetles that might be also feeding off of aphids and dangerous things to your garden. But again, the praying mantis doesn't really discriminate. So they're going to eat everything that they can get their hands on, whether that be insects and other things that are beneficial to your garden as well. Um, on top of that, like I touched on it a little earlier, when they're in the um, younger stages, they can be pretty vulnerable, but it happens when they're adults too. So you need to be careful if you're going to have praying mantis you know, in your garden and using it as a form of pest control, they can be wiped out pretty easily. So you need to be careful that, again, they don't get taken out uh, over the summertime. So one thing that they do is they lay eggs and it's almost in like a, a protective egg sack and they'll do this in like the late fall before winter is coming and then they can actually survive in there throughout the winter but a lot of times what happens is they'll lay these egg sacks on tree branches or maybe on like the side of the shed or you know the fence around your garden and so these things can again fall down, land on the ground, and then be taken out by ants and other insects, things like that. So if you're wanting to keep these praying mantis around your garden and your home, what you can do is you can actually take those and put them in a safer place. Be that on a better surface, right? Rather than just kind of hanging from a branch, you could put them in a shed outside, leave them on the top of your fence to make sure they don't get taken out or maybe you have a shelf in your garden, whatever the case might be. Um, the thing to really keep in mind though is that you probably don't want to bring them inside because after about 10 to 15 days of warm weather, uh, these eggs can start to hatch. So if you bring them inside, you might have a bunch of praying mantis inside your house. So that might not be the, the goal for yourself. But again, you can put them in a safer place over the winter. They can survive. And then again, you can place them in better places. Springtime comes around and the temperatures start warming up and having those praying mantis around your home. And then some people like to use them as pets. That's kind of cool. You know, you can have them in your house. They can take out different pests that might be flying around. But at the same time, they're not the best form of pest control in your home because uh, adult praying mantis, they can fly. They have wings. Um, the females, not as much. They still have wings, but the males seem to do a much better job flying around. So if you kind of leave them out and about on their own, uh, they can fly out of your home, kind of eliminating the ability to take on pests. And like I said, they're also pretty fragile. So if you're picking them up, sometimes you could crush a leg or crush part of their body. So again, they're, they're fragile in that sense when they're compared to us as humans. So they're not, again, the best form of natural pest control. They can do a lot of good, but also have some negative effects as well by 
really attacking everything. And then at the same time, if you want to combine that with any other sort of pest control, a lot of times you could wipe out their whole species pretty easy, you know, in your garden or wherever they might be living around your home um, by just a misplaced spray of pest control products. So again, if you're trying to do that on your own, which you really don't recommend in general anyway, uh, you could end up kind of taking out their population and then leaving the pests in your garden to really take over and, and have no uh, predators to really combat their numbers. So again, hopefully you guys got some valuable information from this, enjoyed these tips and some facts about the praying mantis. If you did, feel free to comment and share. And if you do have pest control issues, be sure to head to rovepestcontrol.com. And as well, if you happen to be a first time customer with us, head on over to rovepestcontrol.com forward slash 50 off and enter your information there for $50 off your first service with us. So if you have specific pest needs, uh, pest issues around your home, or maybe you just want to set up a general protection program, again, head on over to rovepestcontrol.com. And then if you're a first time customer, again, head on over to rovepestcontrol.com forward slash 50 off to get that great discount. But thanks again for tuning in. We'll talk to you more soon.